Welcome back to Inside Politics. Our guest today is Nashville Mayor Megan Barry. Uh, Mayor Barry, before we get back into the policy matters, I want to get your reflections on the passing of Tennessee mm -hmm. pioneer in politics, Jane Eskin. She, she died this week at the age of 83. Uh, the first woman to hold yeah. a statewide, win a statewide election, first to be nominated for a statewide office when she was a U.S. Senate candidate. No, she must have been sort of at least a role model for you. Uh, ab absolutely. She, Jane was inspirational. I mean, she was a trailblazer, and she broke ground on so many things, the ones you just mentioned. She was also the first woman uh, to head up the Tennessee Democratic Party, uh, and as you mentioned, to win a statewide office as a woman. Uh, that's never happened since. You were also in Philadelphia for the Democratic National Convention. You were a delegate for Hillary Clinton. Uh, there must have been some deja vu feelings as far as being the first to shatter a particular glass ceiling when you saw Mrs. Clinton nominated to be, to be the Democratic candidate for president. What was it like to be up there and what kind of deja vu feelings did you get? Well, it was really an, an incredible experience. I, the, the one night when she came on the video and she was talking about there may be a, a young woman out there who will be the next president uh, reminds me of when I see little girls here in Nashville who say, oh my gosh, you mean a girl can be the mayor? And I think that's, that's such a great moment. Let's move back into some questions that you and I discussed right after you were elected. You were here the day after you were elected mayor and you said one of the things you needed to get some early progress on was the area of traffic congestion right. and long term into mass transit. So uh, in turn, I don't see the traffic backups getting necessarily any better. In fact, with school starting, there's usually more traffic on the road. So what kind of progress can you point to at least moving in a certain sure, direction? Sure, and I think when we talked about that low hanging fruit uh, you know, several months ago, we have made progress on that. I, you know, we mentioned just sinking traffic lights. Uh, we have spent the last six months sinking traffic lights. We've got several more to go before the end of the year. That really helps and, the input and, and, and output. It, where do people have to drive to find those sinked lights? Well, there's 600 of them that we've, you know, that we've uh, <laughs> synced and then we've got another 400. So, and we've done a lot of work on specific uh, interse um, intersections. We've got 16 intersections that we're working on across the, the city. One where a young woman was killed uh, several years ago. And I got the, the most wonderful letter from her family just thanking us that nobody else will ever have to experience that. The General Assembly and local uh, elected officials here were able to move together to pass legislation yep. that would allow for the interstate service lanes to be used for bus yep. express lanes uh, and also to allow for public-private partnerships, particularly in the financing of perhaps some right. mass transit projects down the road. What are the next steps that's been passed in the legislature, so what happens next, and we're going to start seeing something. Well, so clearly with, with the, the bus on shoulder, which uh, um, was very exciting to, to see passed, we have to do some infrastructure upgrades along those uh, that, that corridor, and you also have to have the terminus point so that people can park to get on that bus on shoulder, so that's all in process, uh, and so that's part of that, that, but I think the, the bigger question right now is how you pay for everything. Now, the money for that, would that be state money to have to do those upgrades, Metro money? The Metro would have a share of that as well. Well, that, that, those are TDOT roads, so, um, uh, you know, the 24 and, and shoring up the shoulder. And see, TDOT talks about not having enough money because gas tax doesn't work, so we're, are so they, we have going to go into that conversation So we have lots of conversations too. about this. We need to figure out the funding mechanisms. Now, you also have a situation where the Transit Authority, and the, both the Metro Transit yep. Authority and the Regional Transit Authority are about to make their recommendations. Right after the public input and study they've done about both long-term and short-term mass transit things. That's coming out in the next couple of weeks, sure is, is that yes. right? It, it, yeah. And that's actually going to say, gee, we ought to look at doing this and yep. this, and also perhaps talk about funding mechanisms for that too? There will be a funding mechanism component in there, but I think that what you're really going to see out of their report is what we should do. What, what, what the public has said, because this has been a public-driven um, pro process, and you also just had the chamber come out with their recommendations. And, uh, I want to talk to you about that. Okay, <laughs> let's talk away. <laughs> well, the, the chamber in specific talked about taking Radnor Yards out in South Nashville and literally moving it out of county, perhaps someplace, and using Radnor Yards as some kind of mass transit uh, marshalling place. Right. That sounds enormously complicated and expensive. Usually dealing with the railroads is not an easy process, period. So is that anything other than, it sounds kind of pipe dreamy. Well, to I me. think it's good to have aspirations. <laughs> 
<laughs> and is that more an aspiration than well, a likelihood? Well, at the moment, there's a whole lot of work that's got to go behind that. You're you're exactly right. Uh, you know, we're one of the biggest hubs for CSX moving their freight in this area, so it's not uncomplicated uh, to find them another space and then to, to make that happen. Now, some of the members of the Metro Council have been proposing legislation. I think it may have passed that asks you to come back and give some specific yep. recommendations about funding mechanisms, and I think they want to have that by the, by end, the end of the year. Of the year. Are, are you we, comfortable with that? Yeah, we were already on track to do that, so um, I think that was a, 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 a maybe a non-binding memorializing resolution asking us to do that, which we're happy to do. Now, to fund things perhaps inside Davidson County, during the mayoral election, you spoke several times, including on the show, about the possibility of having a referendum to use the rest of the local property tax, right. sales tax option that we have in this town. I think we have about three quarters of a cent. Yeah, it's a half a cent. Half a cent. And half of that half a cent has it, to go to schools. Now, is that something that you'd like to see? Uh, to, uh, is that something you're likely to bring to the council again to fund projects probably inside Davidson County? There's not going to be just one funding mechanism for our overall transit so that's definitely going to be on the table as a consideration. I think what, what what voters need to see is the whole funding package so that they can make determinations about which funding streams, gas tax, potentially a referendum, um, and other options have to be presented. Is there going to have to be some kind of tax that's shared among the Nashville and the Donut counties that funds the things that go across county lines? And isn't that something you also have to take back to the General Assembly to get their side uh, off on? Absolutely. Well, these referendums could pass in other counties. Uh, and the mayors and I who, who are uh, in these other counties meet on a regular basis. The mayors in those counties are hearing very strongly from their constituents that they don't want to sit in traffic either. There is a huge appetite, I think, to find these these ways and means to, to fund this. Uh, the appetite might go away, though, if they start seeing what, this, what the cost is going to be and what the actual cost of them out of their pockets is well, going to be. Well, I, I think that that's, that's when, as a leader, you have to make the case because it's not just about today, it's about tomorrow. You have a reputation for being a progressive. Progressives generally don't like sales taxes under any circumstances. They think it takes money out of the pockets of the poor unfairly. So how do you square that with then coming out and probably supporting a referendum to do that half cent sales tax? Increase? As I said, I think there are lots of different funding of <laughs> revenue streams. And I'm progressive, but I'm also pro-business, Pat. Well, okay. <laughs> well, I think, I think the first pitch job has been done here this morning here on the show. Um, so um, another question that comes into traffic and parking is the cost of parking downtown. Sure. There's a story about that recently did, in the yeah. Tennessean. Uh, there used to be efforts by the city to see, used to own the parking garages downtown. Mm -hmm. Does the city need to get into that business? What does the city do to try to keep the parking rates downtown fair? Because they can be quite high, especially for those special event nights. They are. And, and I, what I think you're seeing, too, is people are migrating away from actually driving downtown to using other forms of transportation. And so that's kind of the yin and the yang. If, if, tr if parking is, is higher, then maybe you find alternate transit. And, and that's actually not a bad thing either. Mayor Megan Berry is our guest on Inside Politics, looking back just about on her first year in office as mayor. Back to continue that conversation on the other side of these messages.